Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, indigenous communities in Mexico protest water extraction and pollution. Thousands hold car mob rally amid crackdown in Thailand. IPCC warns average temperatures will reach critical threshold by 2040. And in our video section, we take a look at the surge in COVID-19 cases in the US as vaccination rates cross 50%. In our first story, indigenous people in Mexico's Puebla state have shut down a water facility for over four months. The bottled water plant is operated by the French-owned Bonafort company. For over 25 years, it has been extracting 1.4 million litres of water from the area every day. Moreover, the demand for bottled water grew by 30% during the pandemic. Local communities have stated that the company's actions have dried up water wells. They have also accused the company of polluting rivers and other resources. Reports have linked the water extraction to a large sinkhole near, a well, near the company's well. Since March, a permanent sit-in has been taking place outside the facility in Juan Cibolela. The protesters had called local officials and Bonafor for a meeting on August 8. However, none of them came. It was then that 21 organizations entered and took over the plant. Activists disabled security cameras and blocked the entrances. They then shut down the well which was extracting water from a volcano nearby. Activists have stated that they will turn the plant into a community space or a house of the people. The massive water extraction in Puebla is taking place just as 70% of Mexico is facing a drought. Overall, there are 16,000 purification and bottling plants in the country. Bonafon's parent company Danone, PepsiCo and Coca-Cola alone control 82% of the bottled water market. In our next story, thousands of people participated in a car mob rally in Thailand's capital of Bangkok on August 10. Protesters arrived in car and motorcycles, while hundreds travelled on foot. The protest was called to denounce the government's mishandling of the pandemic. Thailand reported a record 235 COVID-19 deaths on August 10. Tuesday's action followed shortly after at least 10 pro-democracy activists were arrested. Among them were those who had been recently released on bail. These activists had been detained under the country's royal defamation laws. Protesters gathered outside offices and buildings linked to senior ministers on Tuesday. August 10th also marked one year since the release of a charter calling for democratization. It was released by the students at the Thammasat University and demanded a reform of the monarchy. These activists came together to form the United Front of Thammasat and Demonstration and organized Tuesday's protest. They were joined by several groups, including the United Front for Democracy and Against Dictatorship. They called for constitutional reforms in the release of detained activists. Other demands included the procurement of more effective vaccines. As the protesters reached the King Power Office, they were met with large deployment by riot police. As per local reports, police deployed flash bang grenades and tear gas to suppress the crowds. Our next story is about a UN report which has stated that human activities are impacting the climate in irreversible and unprecedented ways. Scientists believe that the global temperatures will reach the critical threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius rise by 2040. These findings are part of a report by the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It is based on over 14,000 studies from across the world. Greenhouse emissions have already warmed the planet by 1.09 degrees Celsius. Heat waves and heavy rain have become very common and more severe. Droughts in several regions have also been drier and lasted longer. A further rise in temperatures would lead to oceans becoming warmer and more acidic. It could also lead to a loss of seasonal snow cover, melting of glaciers and the thawing of the permafrost. World leaders had committed to limiting global warming to below 2 degrees Celsius in 2015. However, the Climate Action Tracker Group has stated that the policies have put temperatures on track for a rise of 3 degrees. The report released on August 9th was approved by IPCC's 195 member countries. However, it does not contain any mention of fossil fuels. This is despite the fact that the use of coal, oil and gas is a leading cause of greenhouse gas emissions. A 2017 report had also found that just 100 fossil fuel companies had been responsible for 71% of industrial greenhouse emissions. The scientists reportedly told DW that fossil fuels had been mentioned in the draft's original report. And for our final story, we go to the US, which is facing the highest number of COVID-19 cases since February. As of August 9th, the country had recorded an average of 100,000 cases for three days in a row. Hospitalizations also rose by 40% in the past week. Meanwhile, the CDC has announced that almost 60% of the population has received at least one vaccine dose. Here is Dr. Satyajit Rath to talk more about the situation in the US. The way that the patterns of the outbreaks of infection are occurring now is now overlapping with the patterns of outbreaks of vaccination. Because just as the infection outbreaks are not one uniform equitable spread, so also the pattern of vaccination 
not simply in the global south, but even in the global north, is not a uniform, equitable, slow increase in the percentage of vaccination. It's there not are uniform. neighborhoods and communities where it is high, neighborhoods and communities where it is low. And this is why what we are seeing is an intermeshing of two patchwork quilts. And this is why when we begin to think about our expectations that as percentage of vaccination rises, numbers of cases should fall is, an, is, is, a, is a misleading focus on averages. In the first place, what we are seeing is that the frequency of reports of infection, infection, simply detecting virus, amongst the vaccinated is substantially lower than amongst the non-vaccinated. That's the first point to keep in mind. The second point to keep in mind that even amongst the people who do have infection, despite being vaccinated, the frequency of their landing up in hospital and needing critical care is much less. And the consequence of that is that deaths have fallen quite substantially. But here's the interesting statistic that's useful to look at. Think about the American numbers. The US numbers currently are about 100,000. And if you look at their so-called last wave at about 100,000, the death numbers accompanying those 100,000 kinds of numbers are far smaller. But remember that only half the people are vaccinated. And the bulk of these current 100,000 case numbers are amongst the non-vaccinated. So it's reasonable for us to say, shouldn't, since the bulk of the cases are in the non-vaccinated, shouldn't death numbers be about the same? or even more perhaps because everybody including the CDC is saying that the Delta variant is a little more lethal, which uh, number we should look at with some skepticism, but that aside, shouldn't the death numbers be larger? And what is missing there is the fact that what I'm calling this patchwork quilt of vaccination, even in the US, the proportion of people at high risk of death, meaning people with comorbidities, the elderly, people in nursing homes have been hugely vaccinated okay. so that the unvaccinated people who are falling ill in the US are primarily younger people without comorbidities. And it is therefore a combination of these circumstances, these, this, this intermeshing of patchwork quilts that I'm referring to, that is leading to very, very low numbers of death. This is happening in Europe, it's happening in, in Canada, it's happening in the US. All across the global north, death numbers have fallen hugely because of this combination of circumstances. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.